In December 1958, a monster arrived in Utah on three railroad flat cars. When assembled, it would become the largest truck the world had ever seen. Standing 14 feet high, stretching 55 feet long, and rolling on 18 man-sized tires, this giant piece of iron could haul 165 tons of earth in a single load. It was called by some the Yuknik, and it belonged to Western Contracting Corporation of Sioux City, Iowa. This is the story of how a small-town construction firm demanded something that didn't exist, how a Cleveland machinery manufacturer pushed the limits of 1950s engineering to build it, and how this one-of-a-kind machine briefly helped reshape America's landscape. Western Contracting Corporation was founded by H. H. Everest in 1917 in Sioux City, Iowa. What began as a modest operation handling small highway projects and light grading work would transform into one of the most ambitious heavy construction outfits in American history. The Everest family had a reputation for pushing equipment manufacturers beyond their comfort zones, constantly demanding bigger, faster and more powerful machines than anything available on the market. By the late 1940s, Weston had secured contracts that would define their legacy. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers awarded them work on four massive dams along the Missouri River, Gavin's Point, Fort Randall, Oahe, and Big Bend. These projects, spanning from 1948 to 1964, required moving astronomical quantities of earth. The Oahe Dam alone, near Pierre, South Dakota, would become the second largest rolled earth dam in the world containing more than 93 million tons of packed earth, rock, and concrete. To complete such enormous undertakings, Western operated fleets of equipment painted in their distinctive Western orange. Their job sites hummed with activity 20 hours a day, nine months a year, stopping only for the brutal Dakota winters. Enter Euclid. The company's origins trace back to 1907, when George A. Armington founded the Armington Electric Hoist Company in Wycliffe, Ohio. After relocating to nearby Euclid, the firm was renamed Euclid Crane and Hoist. George's eldest son, Arthur, recognized the potential in earth-moving equipment and steered the firm in that direction. By 1924, they had introduced the Euclid automatic rotary scraper, followed by wheeled scrapers that proved remarkably successful. The Great Depression barely slowed them down. In 1931, the Euclid Road Machinery Company was incorporated, and by 1934, they produced their first purpose-built off-highway dump truck, the Model 1Z. Unlike competitors who simply modified existing road trucks, Euclid designed their haulers specifically for brutal off-road conditions. In 1949, Euclid pioneered something totally revolutionary, the twin-engine concept. Available power plants at the time simply couldn't produce enough power for the enormous haulers the industry demanded. Euclid's solution was pretty simple. Install two engines, each driving a separate transmission and axle. The Model 1 FFD, a 34-ton truck, demonstrated that this approach worked brilliantly. Two years later, in 1951, Euclid unveiled the 1 LLD, a 50-ton rear dump truck powered by twin 300-horsepower Cummins engines. Billed as the largest production truck in the world, the 1LLD weighed 103,000 pounds empty. Between 1951 and 1953, Euclid manufactured 46 of these giants, and Western Contracting Corporation owned 34 of them. By 1952, Weston was running their fleet of 30 trucks at the dam projects along the Missouri River. But Hubert Everest Jr., the company's treasurer and equipment manager, wanted something even bigger. The existing 50-ton trucks were impressive, but the scale of the work demanded more capacity. What emerged from this demand was unprecedented. Working with Charles W. Jones Engineering Company of Los Angeles, Weston modified one of their LLD trucks into something entirely new. The engines, cab and frame became the tractor portion of a massive hauler. Two Cummins engines were fitted with turbo superchargers, boosting output to 375 horsepower each for a combined 750 gross horse. Behind this tractor, they fabricated a custom semi-trailer with a rear dump bed. The complete rig measured 55 feet long and 15.5 feet wide, rode on 18 massive tires 
and could haul 80 cubic yards of material, roughly 150 to 165 tons, depending on the load. The gross vehicle weight reached 590,000 pounds when fully loaded. Maximum speed, 35 miles per hour. The industry dubbed it the Euknik, a playful fusion of Euclid and the unique configuration. Weston called it the Weston 80 in reference to its 80 cubic yard capacity. The giant truck first went to work at the Oahe Dam project near Pierre, South Dakota. Construction had begun in 1948, and by the mid-1950s, crews were moving crazy quantities of earth. Working two 10-hour shifts, the operation moved 75,000 cubic yards daily. 45 dump trucks worked alongside the Marion 191M electric shovel, the largest of its kind at the time, with its 14 cubic yard bucket. On August 3, 1958, came the dramatic finale. With 8,800 cubic feet per second of water still flowing past the dam site, Western Contracting performed the final closure. Every available dump truck was called into action. Six heavy-duty tractors pushed shale into the Missouri River, while trucks dumped material at an average rate of 3,200 cubic yards per hour. Weston completed the closure in just 21.5 hours. The dam reached its full height in October 1959, President John F. Kennedy would dedicate it on August 17, 1962, when the power station went online. In late 1958, the Euknik found a new home. Kennecott Copper Corporation had awarded Western Contracting a contract to remove 8 million cubic yards of overburdened waste rock from the upper levels of the Bingham Canyon mine in Utah. This open-pit copper operation southwest of Salt Lake City was already legendary, having operated since 1906. It would eventually become the largest human-made excavation on Earth, stretching 2.5 miles across and plunging more than three-quarters of a mile deep. The massive truck arrived in Utah on three railroad flatcars in December 1958 and was assembled and ready for service by Christmas. The Western 80 joined a fleet of 30 50-ton Euclid trucks there. A 1959 article from Utah Oil Company's Utico Torch magazine captured the scene. A real giant, comparable to something out of a Paul Bunyan tale, is hard at work hauling 100 cubic yards of earth at Kennecott's huge Bingham Open Pit copper mine. The operation employed 120 workers across two shifts, directed by project manager Tom Spite. At full capacity, the Euknik was moving 2,000 tons of rock per hour. When the machine arrived at Bingham Canyon, it received an upgrade. The original turbocharged Cummins engines were replaced with twin GM diesel engines producing 850 horsepower combined. The change was visible. Where the Cummins-powered version had a single exhaust stack, the new power plant required four exhaust stacks across the front hood. Kennecott kept expanding Western's contracts. In January 1960, they added 4 million more cubic yards from the mine's west side. By September 1961, another contract called for 12 million cubic yards from both the east and west sides. That year alone, Western's trucks moved 21 million of the 73 million tons of waste material removed from the mine. The Western 80 and its smaller siblings continued working the upper levels of Bingham Canyon until the mid-1960s when Kennecott transitioned to its own fleet of trucks for waste removal. The writing was on the wall for Western Contracting's glory days. The mid-1960s marked the end of their bidding on very large construction projects. The massive Missouri River Dam contracts were complete and the era of one-of-a-kind monster machines was giving way to standardized fleets. The manufacturer that built the truck Western modified had its own turbulent journey. General Motors had acquired Euclid in 1953 for $20 million. At the time of purchase, the Ohio firm was generating $33 million in annual revenue, with 1,600 employees building roughly 175 trucks monthly. Euclid dominated the off-highway market, controlling more than half of all sales. That dominance attracted unwanted attention. In October 1959, 
the US Department of Justice filed an antitrust action against General Motors, arguing that GM threatened to control the off-road hauler market. After fighting the suit for eight years, GM surrendered in 1968 and agreed to sell its Euclid division. White Motor Corporation of Cleveland purchased the American operations and the Euclid name. GM retained its Scottish factory and international sales, rebranding its remaining earth-moving equipment as Terex. White operated Euclid as a subsidiary until selling it to Daimler-Benz of Germany in 1977. The German automaker held on through a brutal recession before selling to Clark Equipment Company in 1984. Clark then formed a joint venture with Volvo called VME, an acronym for Volvo Michigan Euclid. In December 1993, Volvo formed another joint venture with Hitachi Construction Machinery of Japan. Hitachi gradually increased its ownership stake until taking full control in 2000. On January 1, 2004, Hitachi renamed the operation Hitachi Construction Truck Manufacturing Limited. The famous Euclid Green gave way to Hitachi Orange, and the Euclid trade name was phased out entirely by year's end. After 80 years, the Euclid nameplate disappeared from construction machinery. Western Contracting Corporation still exists today, though dramatically different from its mid-century peak. Now focused on marine and heavy construction along the Missouri River between Gavin's Point Dam and Kansas City, the firm remains in the Everest family. Daniel E. Everest Jr. serves as the third generation of family ownership. The Bingham Canyon mine continues operating under Rio Tinto ownership, still extracting copper from what has become the deepest open pit mine on earth. Modern haul trucks there carry 300 tons or more, dwarfing what seemed impossibly large in 1958. The Yuknik itself vanished from the historical record. Unlike preserved museum pieces or documented scrapping, no clear account exists of its final disposition. It likely met the fate of most working equipment, cannibalized for parts, cut up for scrap, or simply worn out and abandoned somewhere in the American West. What made the giant custom truck so awesome wasn't just its size. Plenty of machines have been built bigger in the decades since. What made it extraordinary was the audacity it represented. A construction firm from Sioux City, Iowa, looked at the biggest truck available and said it wasn't enough. They found engineers willing to push beyond existing limits. They created something unique for projects that demanded the impossible. The dams Weston built still control the Missouri River. The copper from Bingham Canyon still flows into American industry. And the legacy of pushing equipment beyond its designed limits lives on every time an engineer looks at a specification sheet and asks, what if we made it bigger? That question, more than any single machine, is what drove the golden age of American earth moving. The Yuknik was simply the most visible answer to it, rolling on 18 tires through the Utah desert, carrying 165 tons of earth toward the future.